Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. We are back. Got a whole crew here of panelists, not attendees, panelists. We had a few issues here with technology beforehand. Man, Zoom. It's keeping us alive, though. So we appreciate it. So we got Luke, Tony, Wyatt. What's up, dudes? Go on. Ready to talk lures today. But not just any kind of lures, wintertime lures. Luke, what do you what what kind of lighting you got there, dude? I don't know. It's all yellowish. I was just noticing that. This is like uh, going going old school retro styles. So this what it's looking like. Could be the beard. Like, like yeah. The, what when you when you went back, it uh, it actually corrected. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's recognizing the beard. This yeah. dude is retro. Zoom. That's what's happening. Zoom is putting some new features in there. Pretty high tech. Oh, all right. All right. So who wants to start this puppy off? Talking about wintertime lures. And what, is he, what does even winter mean? Is there a certain temperature, time of year? Just the season. Just the mm. season. So it's basically, I mean, just the cold spectrum. Everybody, like, why it is, North Carolina, is, it's a whole lot colder than it is here in Florida. But the fish are behaving the same way, right? They get out of the comfort zone. They're going to be doing the same behavior patterns. And uh, well, maybe let's do one at a time. So I, I would say if I could only have one lure for the winter, and it didn't matter if it was because post cold front and like right during the cold front or like the day after is totally different than like three or four days after for me. But like one all around that I always trust is just the paddle tail, like but, but the three inch paddle tail. Um, I still I've still been doing great with this. This is an all around all around type thing, but the small one in particular with the quarter ounce jig head. If I could only have one lure, this would be it. So I'll, I'll start off with. The elusive paddle tail. That's a slam shady. If you guys are listening and not watching, yeah. And this one's so this is the three that we the Z-Man ones are back too. And uh, and so I it's been a while since I've used them and and I you know got them back on. And and this this exact one has we I totally crushed some trout the other day. I mean we caught it caught at least 30, 40 fish without changing it and still in good shape. These things are these things are bulletproof. So I'm I've been really happy with these. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll have to second that one, Luke. In fact, this is one that was catching a lot of fish the other day. It's my slam shady paddle tail um, on, a, on a on a little one eighth ounce jig head here. And I think the reason I like these so much in the wintertime, and it's I, I'm not fishing anything bigger than three inch size, just because there's not a lot of bait fish present, um, and there are actually some shrimp, lots of shrimp present. And this profile does a great job, depending on how you fish it, of imitating either. Um, and, and what's really great about the Z-Man material is that it sits on the bottom uh, and it, it's buoyant. So that jig head goes down to the bottom and it just sits there and it's got just a slight amount of action. And, you know, you talked about all the fronts, uh, especially during a front or, um, or right after when those fish have really been stunned, like directly after a front. I find that those fish are really lethargic and being able to put a lure in front of their face and just have it have such a subtle little action, even while it's not moving, uh, is really, really effective, especially for the redfish. For the trout, I find that I can still fish these paddle tails a lot like I do in the fall, kind of fast around those creek mouse points, things like that. It's just such a versatile bait. And a lot of times I will use this to find fish. Um, but I will say there's another bait that I tend to use a lot in the wintertime, and that's a artificial shrimp. Um, this one's a voodoo shrimp, but I'm, I'm testing out a lot of different ones here. Uh, some, some ones that might even be working a little bit better, uh, than I'm holding here, but I, I just love the shrimp patterns in the winter time, just because you can fish them real slow. It's what's available for those fish. Um, and, and I find that they're a lot of times holding a lot deeper and the retrieve that you have with shrimp, unless you're using something like a DOA that's meant to be fished in current typically is on a heavy jig head at the very bottom. So a lot of those fish are sitting at those really deep, stable temperatures. And that bait is right in their face, giving them the exact presentation they want. And it's what forage is available. So I tend to play around with the paddle tail and the shrimp a lot. I will always use the paddle tail first to find the fish. And then I will use the shrimp just because you can cover so much more ground with, I mean, if I would try to search bait with those shrimp, it would just be really tough for me because it's a much slower presentation. Uh, but I find that I'm, I'm always going to go with the one, two punch on that paddle tail shrimp combo. So before we go to Tony, I want to, I want to get an answer from you. You Luke said one fourth, uh, right? Jig head. 
or, this, or quarter ounce. Yeah. Okay, or quarter ounce. I, I'm, I'm, you know, in the metric system here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and why you said one eighth? Yeah, so I, I'm sorry. I guess I need to elaborate on that more. Depending on the type of fishing that I'm doing, I'll play with the jig head. So if I'm up in the shallows looking for redfish, I'm going to go with one eighth ounce jig head. I will also use the one eighth ounce jig head if I'm trying to swing a paddle tail through a current area. Now, if you've watched any of my other tips earlier on in the year, if you're an insider, I was using this with a one fourth ounce jig head because I wanted it to fish faster in the winter time. Again, the fish are a little bit more lethargic. So I'm using a lighter jig head and adjusting my cast so that I'm not really having to do too much but that bait is going to almost suspend and hang in that strike zone just a little bit longer, just to give those fish every opportunity that they need to strike. So I will use the one eight ounce jig head in those two scenarios. But if I'm fishing deep holes for redfish or flounder, I'm going to use a one ounce jig head all the way. But, but Joe, with, the, and with these jig heads, it's always about depth, depth coverage too. So the, the quarter ounce kind of does it all, but I'll go to three eighths ounce if I'm fishing like deeper docks. And, uh, and so it's even the one eighth if it's shallower water. So the, the key is just having the paddle tail or whatever soft plastic and then having multiple steps of jig heads so that you can adjust it and control your depth. That, that's crucial. Um, Tony, what, what you got? So I'm a little different just because in the winter time, that's when the water is the cleanest. And that's where I do when I do the majority of my sight fishing. And it's usually, you know, late morning into the middle of the afternoon where those fish are going to be pushed up shallow. So when you are fishing those or you're going after those fish that are pushed up shallow, water is very clear. They're very aware of what's going on around them. They could see, they could feel and they could hear everything. So I go a little bit lighter. I go with a weedless hook like the owner twist lock hook and the one sixteenth ounce. Uh, if it's a little windier or if I'm using a Z-man bait, I'm going to go with the one eighth ounce. And there is a trick to rigging those baits on this hook. We actually have a video for that. Uh, if you want to check that out, just go to saltstrong.com and search rigging Z-man baits on owner twist lock hook and that should pop up. But I do also like to go with a paddle tail. Uh, just recently, I've been using uh, the Z-man four inch paddler Z in the slam shady color. We have that now in the slam shady color. I believe we sold out pretty quickly on the shop page, but we should be getting some more uh, soon. But what I like about the paddler Z compared or the, uh, yeah, the scented paddler Z compared to like the minnow Z or the diesel minnow is that it has a smaller tail on there. So it doesn't kick as much. It doesn't cause as much vibration, especially when you're fishing shallow, clean water. You don't want a lot of vibration up there just because it will spook those fish. So something with a more subtle tail, but still gives a little bit of action can definitely work really well. And then my other go-to would be a four or a five inch jerk shad because it's more of a finesse presentation rigged up on one of those really light hooks because when that lure hits the water, you don't want to create a lot of commotion, a lot of splash because those fish will definitely pick up on it and it will more than likely spook them rather than catch their interest. Nailed it. And so, yeah, you actually beat me to my second lure and, and uh, on the conditions aspect. So early in the morning when it's cold out or after the front, I, I stick with the jig heads and, and keep it low. I keep it on the bottom in deeper water. But as Tony said, when those fish start creeping up, when the sun's out, like today, I just got back from an awesome trip. It was a textbook trip and uh, the sun came out around 10 o'clock. Uh, the water was low. And so I took, even with the bay boat, I got that boat up on the shallows and I was sight fishing really nice trout and redfish with this, this jerk bait. So the same hook Tony was talking about, this is the, uh, the eighth ounce jig, uh, the eighth, eighth ounce weight, uh, but the same, it works great with the 16th as well. Um, and this is the Alabama leprechaun. So the five inch split tail jerk bait, this thing is deadly. This is my go-to now for when it's calm and clear. And, uh, and today was test, it was a textbook day I caught multiple trout over 20 inches. I, I sight fished a redfish that so was like 25 inches. And then early in the morning, right when it was cold, I wasn't on the flats. I was throwing a jig around docks and caught a 30 inch snook. It was like, it was the textbook textbook trip. It was perfect. And uh, there's some fun videos. Uh, the whole thing was on film. The snook catch was crazy. It got around pilings and, and I somehow got it out. But yeah, this is my one, two punch, right? I should go this way. So deep, deep water, jig head, either paddle tail or a shrimp. Uh, shrimp tail 
and then in the shallows, this is this is hard to beat. And but we are this the the shrimp, the power prawn. Why it why it uh, started? So we've been testing this thing out, and this is definitely creeping up my favorites list. I just haven't had nearly as much time with it as those other lures. So I, I had to say those other lures first. Yeah, the power prawn. Power prawn's legit. Yeah, I went out with you not too long ago. Cold front just came through. We fished the docks. I know we've had a lot of people have been asking, hey, I'm having trouble just catching fish in the wintertime. At least from my experience, the fish in some of these docks is there's usually always fish there. And uh, the key, though, has been to hit the bottom. So that was, that was why I was I, I wanted to, to bring that point up earlier, Wyatt, about the 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 one eight versus one fourth, et cetera, uh, because, and Luke, you nailed it too, right? There's different times of the day when you have uh, the middle of the day and the sun's been hitting on some of these shorelines or muddy bottoms and the bait starts moving up, the big fish are going to start moving up as, uh, as well. One for the bait and two, just to, to be in a warmer water. Uh, but man, that, uh, that power prawn, it gets bites, but you got to be on the bottom. Like that's the one thing, like if you don't have a big enough jig head, you might as well just not be fishing yeah so the having uh, the, the jig head so i always have this this is my jig head little tackle box and it has jig heads all the way from um i guess a i guess a 1 16th is the lowest and it's, i'm getting kind of low but this is my most important thing when i'm on the water this is the most important if i'm if i ever do change which i rarely do but if i am changing lures um, is almost always a, a size of a jig head going from like a three sixteenths to a quarter or even a quarter to a three eighths. That's all a big deal. It's a really big deal. So um, a lot of people go out and I used to do it for many years. I'll go out and buy, I would have 10 packets of, of soft plastics in like one jig head or, or like a pack of quarter ounce or, you know, one or even an eighth ounce is what I used to use all the time. And I would never change weights and I, that, no telling how many missed opportunities I had because of that. That brings up a good point too, just on how important presentation is in conjunction with the lure itself. You know, you can throw all types of lures, but if you're not presenting it properly, you're not going to get a strike. So Tony, uh, on the shrimp, I know you've done a couple, a couple of videos, I think this year on gulp shrimp, still using gulp shrimp winner. Oh yeah. That's like the perfect size, that three inch gulp shrimp on a jig head, uh, again depending on how deep you're fishing you know if you're going four feet or more that's when i'll put on like either a quarter ounce or even a one eighth ounce uh, where i fish we don't have much current so i can get away with a one eighth ounce and like four to five feet of water and then if i'm sight casting the fish up in the shallows i'll bump down to a one sixteenth works really good the gulp shrimp sneaky shrimp mm-hmm oh, they yeah. work yeah, something about that scent is legit. I don't know. I don't know what they have in there, but it's that. That is also that's on my on my top list as well. A gold shrimp, and and the cool thing about it is you can be using the jig head, right? Same jig head. So what I like to do is I like to do the paddle tail gold shrimp combo, because I, with this quarter ounce jig head, we'll just say this will cover uh, with the paddle tail. It'll especially Z-man paddle tail that's that is uh, that floats. It'll cover like the three to four foot depth range really well. But if I want to go to five feet, right, if there's a, a, so a deeper edge of docks, this just has a harder time going down. So I'll just keep the same lure on. I'll just quickly replace the tail, put a gulp shrimp there instead, which is, uh, which doesn't have this paddle and it'll, it'll dive down at least another foot or so. So you can have the same tempo retrieve and now cover deeper water. So that's a little trick for, uh, for just kind of going as a minimalist where you don't want to be the changing lures and stuff all the, or changing lines and knots all the time. You can just go from a paddle tail to a to either split tail or like a shrimp, a little gulp shrimp pattern, and uh, and you can automatically get deeper. Another thing I like about the gulp shrimp when I'm looking for redfish in the wintertime, if I have that rigged up, a lot of times I'll come across black drum when I'm looking for redfish in my area, and that gulp shrimp is like one of probably the top baits that I use for catching black drum on artificial, so. If you happen to come across them, you don't have to switch lures. Just toss a gulp shrimp in front of them, let it sit there, just slowly drag it when they get close. That's how I usually catch them. Yeah, the only problem, and this happened today, is that their the their material changed years ago, and it really made me mad. 
uh, but they're 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 much more um, they're I guess they're they're weaker. So like this was just a pinfish. So a pinfish took the uh, took the tail off, but even still, it catches fish, right? As long as it's rigged properly and it has a good darting motion, even without the tail, they'll fish will hit it. I've got some of my best fish with just little nubs like this, and uh, they'll come up and smack it. Once you show the strength of the power prawn, Luke, show the strength, show the strength. Yeah, this is this is the power prawn and. Yeah, I mean, you could you could really put some uh, pressure in that puppy, and it is it is strong. And so, uh, yeah, another thing too on depth coverage, I've I've recently since starting using this this uh, power point, I've been doing a lot of dock fishing, and I've actually gone up to a half ounce jig head, and I'm really liking it. And uh, particularly for fishing like the five to ten foot depth range, that extra weight is helped get down there, but it's actually working surprisingly good in shallower water too, like three to four feet of water as long as there's not seagrass or oysters or rocks because then we get snagged but if it's just sand just that thing beating on that sand it seems to actually trigger some action like big fish too uh, my my average fish size seems to increase when i'm using this power prawn with the heavier jig head i don't know what it is about it again it's still fairly new on on uh, on using them but i've been i've been extremely impressed with it yeah, and those for those of you listening, I know we we had a request uh, just right before this about hey, when are you guys getting these things in? Well, first and foremost, uh, these are the Brazilian you know power prawns. We got this idea from one of our Insider members, Marcos, who is from Brazil, and this is what they catch those monster robalo on. Uh, I'm talking like some of the biggest snook you've ever seen in your life. And um, we went and fished one what I don't know June or whatever that was to kind of test them out ourselves. And that was when we kind of like, all right, we, we now believe this is the real deal. So we've been testing them now for what, I guess now on month seven. Uh, and then a lot of it's just testing the jig heads. Cause that's a really critical part of it. Cause if it's not rigged, just like Tony mentioned, if you have bad presentation, it, it's just not really going to work. And so we finally kind of cracked the code on the, the best jig heads. It, it um, we had to try out a ton of them and they will be available this month, like meaning if you're depending on when you're listening, but sometime by the end of January, uh, it may be worst case first week of February, but it's only going to be for insider members. Uh, we're going to have limited supplies because we're obviously importing these uh, over. So uh, we, we are going to only have these available for insider members it, for the foreseeable future. I don't plan on changing that. And of course, members will still get 20% off just like they do everything at fishstrong.com. So Luke, Wyatt, Tony, y'all made a great point. Uh, besides getting your, your power prawns, uh, go buy a bunch of jig heads. I mean, that, that to me was one of those aha moments too, of, of, I would, I did the same thing you're talking about, Luke. I would have one I'm like, Hey, three sixteenths, this should work for everything. I'll just let it sink a little bit more. Uh, no, like you need to have every single size out there. Just like you see the bass guys, they have 15,000 different, uh, weights and split shots and bullet weights. I mean, it's just, it, it, one little, the smallest little fraction can make a, a really big difference in terms of how that that bait or lure looks underwater. Absolutely. I, I would say another big thing about choosing your jig heads is thinking about what species you're going after. Um, you know, for me, when I'm going after redfish, they're primarily feeding on the bottom. I'm not fishing in, you know, my paddle tails or my shrimp or anything like that mid column. Uh, when I'm looking for my reds, I'm bouncing it with a one fourth ounce jig head, sometimes even up to a three eighths, just because I know that they're actively searching along that bottom. They're going to feel the vibration of, you know, like Luke said, that big jig head hitting the mud or the sand. And I actually had some really good success. I know I talked about the voodoo shrimp earlier. This is a nice heavy jig right here. And, and this hit in the bottom, I mean, it, it fires those fish up because they can feel those vibrations in their lateral lines. Uh, and it really helps them zero in on that bait, especially if you're fishing murky water, like I am in the Carolinas, but you know, on the same, I guess on the flip side of the coin, Fishing lighter jig heads in current really helps you give another natural presentation of a, a bait fish that's being swept with the current. So I completely agree with that statement. You need to have a lot of different jig heads for different scenarios, thinking about, you know, trout aren't going to be sitting directly on the bottom feeding. Uh, at least I don't see a lot of that in, in my area. So lighter jig heads that stick a little bit longer in the middle of the column tend to produce more trout for me, three sixteenths, one eighths things like that, just because I've got deeper water that I want to kind of stay in that strike zone with. Yeah. And another big reason that the Brazilians don't ever pre-rig their shrimp, no offense, voodoo or DUA, uh, but they like, that's the dumbest thing ever, just because of what we're talking about, right? They have one good shrimp body they know works. 
and they don't ever pre-rig it. They have different jig heads to go in and out. And that's why the material is so tough. You could, you could re-rig that thing a thousand times. What, what would end up happening is if, you know, a blue fish or a mackerel, maybe, maybe even a, 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 a really aggressive lady fish caught the wrong way or a jack is going to rip that tail off. It should still work. Uh, just was, it's not going to work as well as it, as it would with the tail. But uh, that's a big reason they have that crazy tough material so you can keep re-rigging it based on the depth you're fishing. Because that first time we fished one, right, Luke, we went offshore. Like we went, we went chasing snook on some of the wrecks, you know, 10 plus miles out. And we're talking 20 feet of water using the same shrimp. And then we go inshore and we started catching redfish and, and trout and snook in shallow waters and same shrimp. We just take out the jig head and, and, and moved it down. Uh, so that that is one of the net the cons about some of these pre-rigged shrimp although what like what what's the typical size you get Wyatt on like a, a voodoo or DOA yeah the, um, and my big complaint with the voodoo is they don't have very big shrimp um, so on, this is like I think this might be the biggest one that they are it's like 3.75 inches and, and especially when I'm going after bigger redfish like this is the perfect size like this is exactly what those really hunt. Like we talk about how big fish need big for, base. For a lot of people listening, what, what are you holding up there? So that is the power prawn. Sorry. Oh, snap. The power <laughs> prawn. Nice. It's a very nice big shrimp profile. I mean, the kind of shrimp you're going to order at a restaurant with the cocktails. I mean, perfect size profile for a really hungry bull redfish. Just because you think about those fish, they're lethargic. They're going to take up a high calorie meal versus chasing around a bunch of these smaller shrimp that are more difficult to zero in on, that are moving really fast. Those larger shrimp just provide a, a much better meal for those fish to go after. So I would prefer to use larger shrimp. When I did use gulp shrimp, had to stop using them. I was spending way too much money on those packs. They work really well, but in the winter time, I was using four and five inch gulp shrimp just because that's what the big redfish wanted. So I'm excited to keep putting these uh, these power prawns to the test. Um, and I mean, it's exactly what I'm looking for in shrimp bait. If Fat Albert goes to a buffet, what's he gonna grab? The small little shrimp or the big prawns? Fat Albert gonna grab the prawns. Go with the prawns for the big fish. And, and for those listening, so the the power prawns, the first this first iteration, the length is, is I believe it's four and three eighths inches. So it's a lot bigger than like the typical gulp shrimp or those voodoo's that you mentioned. I have been testing out a smaller version as well, and that that does it is working. Like that's what I sight fishing some triple tail with. Um, I prefer that bigger one; you can cast it further for the shallows. But uh, but there is a smaller one that that is working. But my my go to is, is like just like what, for the same reason why it said that bigger baits equals bigger fish, the same premises in the winter as well. Well, like you said, it's just, it's, it just seems to get bigger. Every time we've gone side by side where I'm fishing, let's just say Z-Man paddle tail, I'll get fish, but like you, you're catching these just big fish, same area. Uh, it's crazy that the size of the fish that thing attracts. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I've been very impressed. Um, so yeah, super impressed to the point where like I went multiple months where that was all I was using, but granted I was testing a bunch of dig heads and stuff, but, uh, it, I've been blown away. Yeah. The customizability, is that a word Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of these shrimp is pretty cool too. Is I actually put a rattle in them. I don't know if you can hear that, but it has a little it. cavity in the head that you could put a little glass rattle into if you need to, if the water's really dirty. So pretty that was supposed to be top secret tony come on now you're telling everyone about that we're trying to save that for later but yeah that was uh, <laughs> again another reason why we tested out a bunch of different of uh, different profiles and this one has it all where it's it's tough material it's it's you can rig it weedless and it has that rattle um cavity as well it's 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 like the perfect size for those rattles that um you know, a lot of the fly fishermen use you can get them in most stores yeah talk, talk about that tony uh we we're kidding around uh, but this is the first time people are hearing about it. So t talk about where did you get the rattles? Uh, how, how did you insert them? What's the trick? Yeah, so the rattles, I got them at the at Academy actually a while ago. I was using them to put into like other soft plastics where you have to actually, you know, stick a screwdriver in just to make a little cavity and then put the glass rattle in. But you can get them at like Bass Pro Shops, all sorts of stores, and they're just a little glass tube. Uh, some of them are glass, some of them are plastic. Uh, the glass tends to give out a little better of a rattle because it's metal beads bouncing against glass as opposed to plastic, which sort of absorbs uh, the beads bouncing against them. So you don't get as much of a noise, but the little cavity, it's right in the head. And these little glass uh, tubes, 
they have a pointed end. So you stick that pointed end into the cavity and then just start pinching it through and it'll go right into that cavity. And uh, some other shrimp actually come pre-rigged uh, with rattles in them. Let's see, where is it? Now the chase bait shrimp that comes with a rattle inside. You couldn't actually, even hear that, that Tony, out. that's laughable. And put it at the other one. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. And, and what I, I was testing out some of the rattles and, and it seems like sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing though. So that's again, another reason why it's good to customize it. Like when it's, when it's clear water and calm conditions, um, I was noticing fish spook off from the rattles. It seems like it was just too much, too much vibration. That's again, that's why I really like these call them the silent, but deadly kind of jerk baits where there's, there's no paddle that's created a lot of vibration. There's no rattles. It just has really good looking motion in the water. And the same premise seems to be the case with these shrimp too. If it's, if it's calm and clear, I will actually take the rattles out and just go, just go the, uh, the natural, you know, non, non vibration. But when it's windy or the water's murky uh, and white in the Carolinas where the water's always pretty dark, rattles can be a huge benefit, very, very big benefit. So just keep that in mind where it's a lot of it's situational. And again, it's, uh, that's a cool way another reason why it's good to be able to modify your stuff when you get to like a clear clear patch versus a murky patch um you know switching on and off the rattles is helpful i think one of the other awesome things about the the power prawn is the segmented tail that's something that i i the, another reason i've ditched the the gulps and you know i don't typically use doas there's only one scenario and i'll, I'll use them for and it's fishing current for trout but the segmented tail, I believe, is another big thing, too. I feel like any kind of motion uh, or any extra vibration you can get, especially in murky water, like Luke mentioned, I'm in the Carolinas. Um, and that's, I guess, why I like the Voodoo, but it's not terribly segmented. And even on the chase baits, which is, you know, probably the most expensive artificial shrimp out there, it's got like one small segment on the end of the tail. This thing moves, man. It's like it's got and it, with the ability to add a rattle, it's for everything I've looked for in a shrimp. So, um, I mean, how, how much better does the power prong get? How, how much of the chase bait shrimp now? I want to say like 12 bucks. Tony, you probably know more than I do. Yeah, they retail about 10 bucks for the, uh, the 3.73 or four inch that it is. They also have a bigger one that's uh, I believe five or six inch. That one's a little more. Yeah, one one I've been testing out is the old live target fleen. Is it called fleen shrimp? Yeah, fleen. Oh, you rig it. You rig it backwards, technically. Yeah, check. It's as you can see that price tag or not with my uh, my camera, but uh, yeah, ten ninety nine for. Uh, but it, it came with, uh, it, you know, it has a jig head and it has two bodies. You know, it looks cool, but um, I was actually doing a, a lure test. It was gulp shrimp versus versus this today, and gulp shrimp won. But uh, it works. Both of them. Both of them caught fish. But I mean, it just it's just you know, eleven dollars for a, a soft like one soft plastic lure is is a little expensive. But this one does have rattles too. Barely hear it. Um, but again, that's a, a lot of the premises. You know, it's not just one lure is going to catch fish, while as you know others don't. It's really about putting yourself in the right spot at the right time. Like if you can do that properly, you'll you'll be able to catch fish with all these lures we talked about and others that we haven't. Um, so that's number one, number, number one. And then if you can just get yourself in a good spot and then select the right type of lure for the conditions, then your, then your odds are going to get even better where you can go out there and, and, and really crush them. I wish there was one place that would teach all that. Me too. No, the insider club. <laughs> hi <-o! laughs> If you guys haven't joined us, come on. What are you waiting for? The whole, the whole point of it, if, if you guys are listening and haven't joined, it's everything that we wish was around when, when we were inconsistent. And, and that doesn't mean we were beginners or noobs. It was just we weren't as consistent as we wanted to be. And if that's you, then you should probably take a look at it. And it's for people that value their time and, and money, ultimately. Uh, and what I mean by that is we try to shorten the learning curve every single week we're just putting tips out there and then curating everything we're seeing from this big network of now almost 20,000 members in our community. And then Luke, every single Friday does a, a weekly game plan 
10 minutes or less. And he's literally telling you exactly what he just said, what types of spots, what types of depth, what, what, what types of jig head sizes, like, here's what you want to be doing this weekend. We do it every single weekend, weekend and week out <clears throat> just to help you out, just to, to shorten the learning curve and give you a massive advantage so that when you hit the water, you have a game plan, you know exactly where you're supposed to go. You, you have everything outlined versus the guy or gal like us for many years. It just was kind of winging it and guessing and, oh, I may, might try this. And then all of a sudden you get to your spot and someone's already there. And now you're like a lost kid at Disney. So that, that's the whole point. And the second part, what it's kind of evolved into on, on top of the, the premium education is, is now some of the discounts, right? Uh, we talked about things like the power problem. We're going out and Slam Shady, which is a registered trademark that, that you know, we created. Uh, these are all things that we're going out based on on the water experience and feedback from our members on, on things that just absolutely work. And then giving them to you at a, at a lowest price you can get anywhere. And now rods, reels, all kinds of great stuff. And then of course, the, the community, which is you know, a place that we're spending time in every single week, every single day. Um, and now that it seems like there's a new report. What do you guys think? Every, every four to five minutes. I mean, it's nuts. It used to be like every hour, there's a new report. Now it's like every four to five minutes. It's crazy. Yeah. And this is anglers really across the Southeast from Florida is the majority, or at least that's a little over. It's like 60% Florida now, or like it was like 58 or something. And in Texas, there's a lot, we have a lot of members of Texas and then all in between along the Gulf and then all the way up the Atlantic, up to the, up to New York. It's really anybody who likes catching redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder. Um, it is the ultimate, the ultimate place. You can meet good people. And no matter how experienced you are, if you start as a beginner, you're not going to be a beginner very long. It, when you go through the lessons, the courses that come with it, and then just seeing the, the weekly um, game plans and the weekly uh, insider reports where you can see the lessons in action, like on the water, real time, and just replicate it. That's all you have to do is just replicate what you're seeing from uh, from us and from other members in the community, it is. Uh, I learn a ton just going through that community platform with so many just anglers who like helping other anglers. Um, it's impossible not to learn some really helpful tips. Yep. And now we got our boy Tony doing spot dissections every week. He goes in and just picks a new spot based on our members, uh, based on new members, based on people saying, "Hey, I'm I'm going to be fishing here in, you know, Biloxi or Fort Myers or Corpus Christi, whatever it is." And uh, he goes in there and gets on online maps and, and dissects it. So um, if you love this free content, you should see what we have on the other end in terms of all the mini courses. And even now, three of our mastery courses we give for free to all members, spot dissections, the weekly game plans, and now even inside reports where we go out and fish a new spot every single week and show you what lures or live bait we're, uh, we're using, show you everything, including where we launched, where all the fish were caught, where fish were missed. It's it's just something you can't get out, out there anywhere else. So uh, sorry to turn this into a pitch for the Insider Club, but uh, I know we have so many people that, that email us like, oh man, I love what you guys do and I just still haven't joined yet. And I'm like, well, what, what should we do? Should we put a 365 day money back guarantee? Oh, wait, we have that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're making it a complete no brainer just, and we're so passionate about it because we see the difference this makes. Like we get the testimonials every single day. There are new testimonials, new reports coming and saying, guys, thank you so much. This truly does work in Texas, in Florida, in Louisiana, in the Carolinas, in Georgia in, in Mississippi and everywhere in Virginia and everywhere in between uh, it does work and it will save you so much time and, and now it'll save you a ton of money as well on all the discounts. Uh, and just helping avoid the stuff that just doesn't work. Uh, Cause there's a lot of stuff out there that uh, looking back and, and Luke's got some behind him. I've got a bunch of rods and tackle behind me. If you guys are watching this, uh, I mean, so much of this stuff like, man, I never should have bought that. I should have just stuck to what I know works based on proven trends and proven Fisher reports. So a lot of it is, is trying to save you from yourself and, uh, and ultimately just give you shortcuts. Yeah save money on that and you'll save money, you know, wasting gas driving around in your boat, trying to find where that, find out where the fish are. Yeah. <laughs> sure. A bunch of people burn through a whole tank of gas in a trip, just trying to find a good spot. Oh yeah. Or having to rely on live bait. That was another big thing. It's not that we're against live bait. We have a ton of live bait tips. We all four of us here use it, but man, there is something neat uh, about putting the focus on finding the fish, which is the most critical part, right? Luke mentioned earlier, and then once you know where the fish are, you can use whatever you want. And, and once you get over that hump of not having to rely on live bait, which is what we did for many years, 
and not having to lug around a cast in or worry about your aerators or especially if you're kayak fishing or weight fishing, uh, it just, it makes no sense, but the freedom and the control it gives you to go out there and catch an inshore slam on a lure and the confidence doggone. I remember that first time I did, I was like, Holy smokes. I didn't think this was possible. And now it, it not to say it's easy, but it becomes a whole lot easier uh, to have some of your best days ever, just because you're able to cover a lot of ground and, and put your lure in front of as many fish as possible, which is the ultimate game. Yeah. And, uh, and we, and we had a talk, this obviously was focused on lures, but we wouldn't be doing justice. if We didn't talk about the insider club, because if, if you are struggling to catch fish, 99% sure that it's not because of the lures you're using. Again, is, if you can just get yourself in the right, in the feeding zones, if, if you can identify and predict where those feeding zones are going to be based on the conditions, you got it. Like you can be throwing junk lures and you're still going to catch fish. Yep. So, so if, if you're struggling with that, you're looking for new lures, I would say before you go out and buy a bunch of lures, just try it out. We have the guarantee there. It's uh, it's there for a reason because we just want to make sure we know it's going to help you out. And we just want to make sure that, that you're not, uh, you're not nervous or think you're going to, going to be wasting money because you literally can't. If you don't think it's awesome, you just let us know and we'll give you money back. It's that simple because we, and, and we'll help you choose the right lures. We'll help you dodge the, some of the nice looking fancy $11 lures and, and use some much more affordable stuff that works just as good, if not better in many cases. Yep. Cool. Anything else, guys? I know uh, you got, we got some, actually some weight fishing stuff we're going to be filming here shortly in a few minutes. So uh, for our insider members, so anything else before we close up, gents? I can think of. Get out, yeah. there, get out there and fish. Wintertime was the time I used to think the fish were too cold. They weren't going to be eating. And I was totally wrong. It's now one of my favorite seasons. The water's clear, as Tony said. You can be sight fishing today. I sight fished a nice red out of a 24-foot bay boat. It's awesome. Well, you can get out there, get out there, and uh, don't let a little cold weather keep you from getting out in the water. Yep. And once you find them, you found them. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, if you're not a member, check us out, saltstrong.com. If you are a member, thank you guys so much. You're the foundation of this company, of our family. We, uh, we appreciate you big time. And we have some really, really exciting things besides the power prawn, uh, some really cool stuff on all three fronts, meaning the, the premium education, the online community and the discounts coming your way here in, uh, in 2021. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, you will be definitely wowed this year. Uh, I'm really pumped for you guys to see it. So a lot of cool stuff. Thank you guys. And we'll see you on the next episode. Peace. We out. Easy.